All right, Shy, this one's for you. Um, one of the one of the fellows on the forums around Dex has been having some issues with garbage collection, and thought I would go through just some of the basics on garbage collection and and doing an analysis with that. So I'm uh, gonna go over here. I'm gonna load a file. So go to File Input, and I'm gonna point this guy over to Shy's data which is going to be under here somewhere um, let's see let me SHA there it is shy JSTAT log so that will read the data in and next I'm going to view the data because you always want to make sure that that what you got is what you wanted so hit execute and it's not a whole lot of data but this is what what shy sent me so it uh, looks like about 16 rows of, of data, and next thing I need to do is parse this into, an S, into a CSV. So I'm going to drop a groovy component in here, if I can find it. Um, let's see, it's going to be under programming. So here we go. And I'm going to drop two groovy, well, not, not to drop two, drop three. So the first one I'm going to load, wrote this a long time ago, it's a data source that, that takes a JSTAT log and it reads it in. So uh, I'm not really going to go through this other than it's a regular expression that, that basically parses all this stuff out into the individual fields. And the next thing I will do is go under GC and add the GC statistics deluxe. So that adds some calculated statistics based off of the JSTAT data. And last but not least, I'm going to add an XY chart. And now I'm going to execute the flow, take a look at the line chart. And I'm going to take a look at just the regular timestamp data all the way through the perm utilization. And I guess I can go through these one by one. So this is going to be the relative timestamp in the JSTAT log and it's going to be measured in seconds um, relative to the start of the JVM. So if you start adding a JSTAT, um, a JSTAT probe onto a long running JVM, you're, uh, you know, say if it was an hour into the run, then your timestamp would, would likely start in a range of 3600, 3600 seconds in an hour. And let's look at at Shai's uh, data here. It looks like looks like this thing has been running for for quite a long time. So it would be nice to. And he doesn't have very much data. So on this huge scale, it uh, kind of goes off the edge here. Uh, it, so that's where this Groovy Script Deluxe or this uh, GC Script Deluxe comes in handy because I'm going to go down here to the timestamp C. So the C at the end stands for calculation. So these are the calculated fields based off of the, uh, the, the data coming in. So uh, the first thing that happens is that we take the, we take the non-zero timestamp and we just normalize it down to zero so we don't have that, that layout issue. I mean, I, I could manually adjust the, the bounds on the graph, but that's kind of frustrating and it's just easier to, to work with this. Um, the next thing is that I'm going to pick all the other data, uh, the calculated data through the perm uh, capacity. So this data looks something like this. So running through what these mean, S0, C, C. So that's going to be the survivor space zero capacity calculated field. This one's going to be the survivor one cal um, cal uh, capacity calculated field. And this is going to be the S survivor zero utilization calculated field, survivor one utilization calculated field. So uh, when I say calculated is what we did instead of taking the raw numbers that JSTAT gives, they, they would say uh, say 40k. That would be the value of this field. What we do is we map it to where it sits in memory so we can see the behavior across the memory space. So, you know, rather than map these guys on top of each other, we layer them on top. So basically they're stacked. 
um, based on the capacity number. So it's uh, just part of what the calculation does. And that's the reason I use the calculated version of this data. Um, next we have Eden capacity and Eden util utilization. So it looks like Shai is not working with much Eden data, but he really doesn't have much much uh, memory space period because he's you know somewhere in a 64 meg range. Um, it looks like a lot of his data is actually perm space because his perm utilization is up here and maybe that would indicate that he has some reflection going on I'm not really sure but but uh, you know that's a pretty sizable perm space relative to um, the other generations so one thing I notice is that the old utilization is very high relative to the old capacity so I think Shai is probably doing garbage collecting constantly and there's easy way to verify that I'll, I'll do that in a second um, I'm going to turn these I'm going to turn these points off it's just easier to see things and uh, I think it's an easy solution there I think he, he just needs more RAM but let, let's take a look at a couple of other statistics here <laughs> the uh, the next one is is a perm utilization ratio and this is just going to be a number from 0 to 100 as part of the calculation. So he his perm space is about 81% utilized. And his old utilization ratio, OUR, is 95. And that is horrible. So that is, that's definitely a JVM that's, that's having a really hard time. Um, so let's see. Let's... Uh, scroll over here and take a look at uh, things like full GC counts and stuff like that um, hard to really tell it, it's the problem is it's just not enough time to see any any trends here but but essentially um, that's what's going on in, in Shy's JVM. He needs more memory. So let, I'm going to change this over to another file, and and uh, I'm not really sure. I know I have some JSTAT data here somewhere. I'm just going to pick a random, the the type of stuff that I usually see. Um, let's see. Here's some JSTAT data. Not really sure what this is going to look like, but but usually I'm I'm working in in much larger data sets. Uh, a lot more than 17 samples. Uh, so, in this case, I have uh, it's not too large. It's about 309 samples. But just to give you an idea of, of uh, what I typically see is something that looks more like this. And bear with me while I pick all the data I want to see all the way through the perm utilization so this is the kind of stuff I usually see and the ratios I typically see it in um, survivor spaces so uh, what survivor spaces do is they're sort of a, a things that get collected in Eden um, things that survive a garbage collect go into a survivor space and depending on the policy of your JVM this uh, this data may have a rule that says okay you got a tenuring threshold so if it if it survives let's say that you have a tenuring threshold of of uh, two collects so after two collects if that data stays within the survivor space then it will migrate up to the old generation so that's that's one of the ways memory goes from being short-lived in, in Eden sometimes they call this uh, the young generation up to the old it goes through the survivor space first and one thing you'll notice is that, is that these two things are inverses of one another and the reason you have the two survivor spaces is um, is this the data over here ends up getting copied over here um, while it, it it cleans out that survivor space so at any one time you're gonna have the survivors in, in one of the two spaces so this is intended to keep objects in Eden as long as possible because some of the collectors 
Uh, it's a cheap collection in Eden. It doesn't stop the JVM, but and depending on what collector you're using, when you do the full collect of the old generation, this time in, in here when we're doing this collect, the, uh, the JVM has to stop. So essentially all work ceases within the JVM. Let me, let me back up a little bit more and describe generations and spaces. So, so you have three generations. Over here we can see the perm generation and that's, the, that's between the red and the blue here. So this is going to be the perm utilization. This is the, the perm capacity. This is where things like class files or even reflection files would get stored in the long term. And typically, you, know, you don't see very much collection here, but depending on the policy, you may have class unloading that may occur. But you probably will only see, you won't see much activity here. But it's not good to run out or to hit some threshold but, uh, because you will still... Uh, mismanagement of this tier can cause the JVM to thrash as well. So over here we have the old utilization, or I'm sorry, the old capacity. And here it's it's pretty large, so we, we've got a pretty healthy distance between what we're using, because this is the type of pattern you really want to see. When your JVM is, is humming, then you're going to see these sawtooth patterns. And the more gentle the slope of the sawtooth pattern, the better off you are, because this is when you lose productivity on the server. It's when it does the full garbage collect. So this server is in a really good state. It, it's not doing bad at all. And over here we have the Eden. Um, and it, let me back up again for a second. So old generation. Um, so this is uh, the the old generation, and uh, this is where the long lived objects stay. So. The VM is divided into generations, perm, old, or tenured, and Eden, or sometimes called young. And the generations are divided into spaces. And so over here we have the survivor spaces, we have the Eden space, and but primarily there are three main generations. So um, moving down here, we got the Eden capacity over here. And it looks like a lot of activity, but this is this is quite normal. This is the uh, what you typically see, which is a lot of short-lived objects. They come, they go, they come, they go, they come, they go. Some of them stick around. They swell up these survivor spaces, the stuff that survives for a few iterations, depending on policy, ends up going here. As soon as you hit some sort of threshold, uh, depending on how your JVM is configured, it may it may do a garbage collect every hour if, if there's explicit GCs timed or whenever it hits certain thresholds in a memory. So in this case, it looks like it's doing a, a fairly um, conservative ap approach here and collecting it at about I would guess 55 percent full, you know, which which is quite normal. It's it's nice to clean up early. So this is a different JVM, uh, and hopefully this helps explain some of the generations and, and shows how we can use DEX to actually get at that information. Thank you. And one last thing. Good luck, Shy.